Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Prepper Talk Radio with Scott, Shane, and Paris. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. Good. Awesome. Well, for those of you who are listening in on our podcast, thank you so much. If you could, go ahead and hit like, write us a review, tell us what you think. We've got a lot of good new reviews, and we appreciate those of you who are leaving those. If you're watching on YouTube, hit, hit that like and share. Uh, also give us a review. We, we just we just love it. We love your feedback. And definitely get in our group over at PrepperTalkRadio.com. There's a link to our private group on Facebook. Um, this episode is going to be kind of fun. It's it's I feel like it's a little bit of a slap in the face to me right now, even though I'm the one that selected the topic, um, because a major component of it is, is like the Achilles heel of preparedness. Like a lot of us, myself, I'm not going to say for you guys, because Shane can kick and stretch and kick and Paris works out I'm every 50. day. And he's, yeah, he's 50. I, with my back injury, I can't do crap right now and it sucks. So I'm out of shape. So we're talking health and wellness today. We're talking about like, what should you be able to do physically? Um, what you should be doing physically to help kind of keep yourself in shape, but also emotionally, mentally, spiritually. You want to talk overall wellness um, because your health is probably your Achilles heel. You've probably got tons and tons stockpiled but you're lacking in being able to keep up and do what you need to be able to do um and for me right now that is huge because ever since i got my back injury it's it's been it sucks i can't even go to quarter, quarter mile right now so it's like yeah I, I have surgery next this coming week and i'm like okay here's what i'm going to learn from today from you guys as well as my own research to help me get back in maybe we'll do a fitness challenge in the group see if anybody else wants to join in from what we learned today well, I also, remember a while ahead, ago. Paris, I no, I was. I've been. I've. <clears throat> so one of the things that I really got me into fitness was I. A lot of people who go through maybe like mental issues and mental health struggles find that their time in the gym can really help rectify some of those concerns and the spiraling downward. You know, when you feel good, you do good. And when you, you know, when you're exercising, those endorphins are kicking off. So not just mental health, but also really the physical aspects of it and just health in general. Years ago, I, I, you know, was going through a struggle financially and, and I, I realized, you know, one of the things that I knew I could count on was that 25 pounds at the gym was always 25 pounds. It couldn't trick me. It couldn't change its mind. It couldn't say that it was going to do something. And then it wasn't going to be there when I went to go get it. Like it was it, 25 pounds was always 25 pounds. I could count on it. And so that's one of the reasons why I felt like I needed to have some stability in my life. One thing I know I can do is I know I can pick up 25 pounds five or 10 times every day and just move it. And so I decided to start there. And that's one of the things that's really helped me to maintain. That's one of the reasons why I maintain the consistency. Now it's just a habit. If I don't work out, I feel like a fish out of water. And I asked in my group, uh, well, I originally started the, the Facebook group that we have, Emergency Prep and Self-Reliance, many years ago. And um, I was doing a lot of stuff in, in meetings. And I wanted a place for people to go online, ask questions. And and I, I put in there, hey, guys, let's make sure we're, do, we're staying physically fit. And somebody said, what in the world does that have to do with preparedness? And I was like, bro, if you need to pick up a log or let's say that you an earthquake happens and the roof falls on your child. Like you got to be able to pick that thing up or at least move it enough so your kid can get out from it. Maybe, uh, maybe, you, you know, there's a car accident. You got to be able to pull somebody away from that. You got to be physically capable of doing that. Maybe. Like Shane, your situation, like, I don't know if you even had to use physical physicality to get that guy out, out from underneath that car, but there's so many things like, for, and then let's say that there's a, a storm and you've got a, you know, headwind is 30 miles an hour. You gotta, you gotta walk in that. You gotta grab your grab and go bag. I probably have a way too heavy grab and go bag and I need to work on that. But if I'm going to ruck that sack for longer than a hundred yards, I need to have some physicality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And after sharing some of those things, the guy was like, oh my gosh, I realize physical fitness has a ton to do with prepping. Like, Well, it, it, it's true that physical fitness makes everything easier, everything more enjoyable, it makes life more enjoyable, being able to wake up early in the morning and do what you got to do without uh, being overly tired uh, throughout the day and just so it really, in, in that aspect, it doesn't have anything to do with preparedness, but it has everything to do with it. It's, it's, it's about daily life for me. Uh, and another example is, you know, we, we talk about the flight, fight, 
freeze, fawn, uh, psychological reactions, right? Uh, responses. If you can't run, sprint a quarter mile to get away from danger, that's a pretty big detriment. It could be, right? And what about fighting? Are you, you know, I don't train much in martial arts. I do a little bit of stuff here at home, right? Uh, but I, it does make a difference to me. Uh, and in my physical fitness, if I am not confident in fighting, I am not very, um, oh, what's the right word? Well, just confident out in public and being face to face with someone who could be my enemy, right? I, I do carry every day, but that uh, is a small part of my, uh, of defending myself and my family. It really is. Fitness has a much larger role in that, in my opinion. Absolutely. It, it's funny because I used to do eight to 15 miles a day on my feet. I worked mm -hmm. out almost every day, like, and then injured and I'm like, crap, but I, I miss that. I miss the physicality. I miss the flexibility. I, I miss the mobility. Um, and I'm really hoping praying this works out for me, but it's like, I look at every scenario that I've had to use my preparedness skill set so far. It's been utilizing my food storage and it's been responding to an imminent threat. Meaning I've been at car accident after car accident after car accident, where I was one of the first people on the scene. I could use my first aid kit. I had the right gear. I had the mobility flexibility to be able to do something. And I, I look at what you just said, Shane, and you're like, the ability to respond and to move and to react is huge. I can't pick up my kid and run right now. I will still try. I probably won't get very far. Um, but we, as preppers, like our current situation, wherever we are, we're going to be accountable to what we're able to do, right? That's life. And I think we as preppers understand that a little bit better because there's so much accountability. But I think this is the Achilles heel for most of us is we're, we're not where we should be. Um, some of you guys that are listening are fantastically fit. I've had a few conversations with you and I'm just like, wow. Um, I, I look forward to getting back to those days and, and even my best days, you guys are outperforming me. But you've got to have the physicality. Um, as a reminder, guys, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at AMP3, AMP-3.net. And if you use the code PrepperTalk, you're going to save 15% at checkout. Now, these guys actually serve as some of the hardest working, some of the toughest, most fit people I've ever had the chance to know or work with. Firemen. Wildland firefighters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They work with Oregon wild, Wildland Firefighters. They have a Wildland Firefighter First Aid Kit. Um, this is awesome for massive burns, little burns, and everything in between. Check out everything over there, amp-3.net, and use that code PrepperTalk to save 15% at checkout. Yeah, no, no doubt. Talk about the most fit people in the world. Those uh, uh, smoke jumpers in particular, but uh, yeah, wild and firefighters, man, that, that's something I don't think I could do. But, you know, we're talking about uh, being physically fit as preppers, but just as fathers. I mean, just a simple example. Uh, one of our first kids was going to be born. I had worked all day. Uh, I had then gone to play volleyball. I got back late at night, was just absolutely exhausted. And I say to my wife, oh, I sure hope she doesn't come tonight. And what do you know? It water, within minutes, her water broke. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. And and it was a long, long day. I mean, just, I would say that simple. It's not terribly simple. But those types of things happen. And just being young and physically active obviously got me through that. It was difficult. It was tiring. Obviously not as tough as my wife. Let me, let me shut my mouth there. But... Um, I've got probably you know a handful of other examples where, uh, just like the other other day when we talked about flooding, had flash flooded in our neighborhood, and of course that happened late in the evening. And so what do we do? We start uh, we've got to go bail out water and start cleaning up uh, neighbors' homes late at night after a long day. That all makes a difference when you are physically fit, and it not only makes it easier, makes a difference, but it can actually make the activity enjoyable and fun, especially when you're doing it with others. Yeah, I, I love what you said, uh, Shane, because a lot of times people think of 
oh, I got to go to the gym. I got to look like a bodybuilder. I got to yeah. have six yep. pack abs and be ripped. No, that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about, you don't necessarily, I mean, sure, you should probably eat more healthy. You should probably do some things like that. However, what I'm talking about mostly is conditioning. Like if you, you don't necessarily have to have a six pack abs and, you know, a, a trailer hitch on your, you know, bicep for a bicep, you know? So, but if you have conditioning, if you can work and like a, in whatever shape you miss, whatever physical actual shape you look like, if, but if your muscles are conditioned and you're strong and you can move and you can get going somewhere and, and do all the things that you talked about, especially I think one of the big things about being physically fit is that you can, you have that endurance and that mm -hmm. conditioning, that is the more mm -hmm. important part of this. Like, so if you're going to do working out, uh, I would work out on in, in things that are going to give you more of that um, functional training, more of the endurance training, more of the conditioning type training so that yeah. you're able to have your muscles work for a long time. And, you know, if you're in a power outage or let's say you're there's an, a physical emergency, uh, you might be pulling 12, 15 hours, you know, trying to help save people in the neighborhood you know if there's an earthquake or a flood or a storm and you're you're part of the cleanup crew part of the first responders because you know as well as i do that in, in in any given if it's a significant emergency the actual first responders are going to be days before they get there and you got to save somebody to, to right now so mm -hmm. you kind of have to be the neighborhood first responders in the beginning and that's going to require some physical fitness i think well uh, you know thomas jefferson and you know, like you know me, I like to look to the past, obviously, to prepare for the future. Uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote a, a letter to his nephew, and it's a pretty famous letter. It talks about uh, exercise, and in particular, he said, "Habituate yourself to walk very far." Uh, he further said, uh, "I would let's see, where is it at here? If I can find it." Um, so I'm just reading. Sorry, guys. Um, Oh, and of course, I can't find it here. Uh, basically, said you will not find, have a better exercise uh, than being able to uh, make a habit of walking very, very far without fatigue. What that very far means, I don't know. I mean, it's up to interpretation. I tried to do that once. I made it about 28 miles and not far enough, in my opinion. So like you say, Paris, it doesn't have, you know, I, I don't think workout, at least for me, should be heavy weights. I'm not trying to bulk up. I'm not trying to gain mass. I don't want to look like a bodybuilder. I think that actually works works against me in particular for what I want to do. Uh, and so just walk, being able to walk very far and do some sprinting, I'll add that to that, I, I think can um, make a uh, an, an emergency uh, into a non-emergency, right? Uh, and and uh, it's kind of like the uh, if a tree falls in the woods, doesn't make a sound, right? If there's an emergency prepared, is there is it actually an emergency? Uh, but it, and if you can get yourself away from emergency uh, very quickly, or like you say, with a pack on, and you can walk very far with a pack, you're going to be much better off. So here's an interesting stat: eighty percent of people over thirty can't run a mile or do a pull up. Mm. Ninety five percent of adults over thirty will never sprint again the rest of their lives. Wow. Like the whole, the whole thing about fitness and wellness, like we should be doing these things because you don't have to do a ton. When the need arrives, you have to do what's needed. And it's what's interesting is I look at, I, I did a Google search earlier because I'm like, what, what kind of workout should I be doing? And the word calisthenics popped in my head. So I was looking at that, but I pulled up another AI search to see what the AI would think I should do as, as getting prepared, getting fit as a prepper, right? And let me read this to you because it's kind of ridiculous to me. Deadlifts. Deadlifts. Okay. Squats. Push-ups. Pull-ups. Bench press and ballistic exercises. No cardio, right? This is, this is like more cross trainer or a, a crossfitter or or weightlifter or like bodybuilder like and so i was like i kept with the calisthenics i want to go back to that in a second but i also looked at what does the u.s military do in boot camp do they have big weight rooms no they have boots on the ground 
they they do a two mile timed run. They've got push ups for set durations. They've got planks. Um, they've got standing squats. They've got strut, um, standing power throws, sprint drag carries, interval training, obstacle, obstacle course. courses. And I'm like, yeah, that makes more sense. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, in boot camp, I've never been, but everyone I've talked to is like, oh, it's it's horrible. Amount of exercise they're doing every time they mess up, they're doing push ups or squats or something, right? But if you look at like calisthenics, I, I thought about this because I the look to your past to prepare for the future. I remember both my grandparents on both sides were always doing calisthenics as part of their workout. I'm like, what are mm-hmm. you doing? All and they're like standing there and they're doing all these movements and they yep. plank and and it simple workout 20 minutes, but they were stronger. And fitter. Like I remember my my grandma up until she passed away in her in her nineties, she could do the full splits. She what? would do squats and she would do push ups. Like she was amazing, but the you don't have to do anything crazy intense. You just have to do something and add to it all the time. And well, it just well, it's easier than we think it is to start a routine and keep a routine. Right, yeah. you don't have to go to this or go to the gym, you know, and and if you think about your grandparents, uh, did you see them sitting down very often or were they mostly standing up, moving around, being active? You know, I, I tend to believe the latter. And so that's one thing I try and, and do myself is is stand. Uh, in If we're in a group at a function or something like that, when everybody says, here, have a seat, so no, I'll stand. Uh, I prefer to stand, you know, I'm, I'm there's the James Taylor song, a walking man. I, I'm kind of like the standing man. And, uh, and everybody knows that I prefer to stand. I think that mm-hmm. is a big part of it as well. Um, just, and also while I stand, I tend to do, you know, calf raises and, and also part of that endurance thing that you merit, you, you mentioned Paris is standing or doing something for a long period of time, walking for a long period of time can get uncomfortable, but mm-hmm. then that also breaks into the mental part of it as well. Uh, as I'm standing there, sometimes I feel like, you know what, it would be nice to sit down. I feel like, you know, it'd be, I'd be more comfortable sitting down. And I don't, right? Because that is part of, uh, and that's a, maybe a simple, simple silly little exp- uh, explanation there is, is push yourself into being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And in every aspect, not just standing, walking, running, whatever it might be. And that is part of the mental toughness that we wanted to talk a little bit about as well. Well, I don't want to also, before we move on to mental toughness, I want to just yeah. kind of solidify the, that there's a saying in fitness that says lo- motion is lotion. And mm-hmm. that means for like your joints, especially mm-hmm. as I'm getting older, uh, Shane uh, and Scott, you're coming up here towards us. It, it, you know, there's a, your back anyways, your back's worse than mine. So you know that, you know, the what, what how important it is to be able to move. Sometimes I just stand up too fast and my back is like, oh, and my knees are like, wow, and my hips are like, what did you just do? Don't go so fast. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel like it's really important to remember to stretch on a regular basis. Like I spend time, for example, I work out five days a week and my one day I just stretch. I stretch and I twist and I just do stuff like that that's not heavy. It's not hardcore, so to speak. You would probably look at me and you're like, what is that guy doing? You know, what kind of workout is that? It's just stretching and move, like rolling my shoulders and moving my legs and open hip openers and mm-hmm. just stuff like that to keep myself uh, agile that way because, you know, you can, you need to be strong, we need to be conditioned, and we need to be able to be flexible. I think flexibility is a big part of um, physical fitness as well so that and, you know, Scott, you mentioned some of those deadlifts and those other workouts. I feel like those are an important part of it because who knows, but you might need to deadlift a, a, a beam off or off of somebody of a house that fell on them or something. So those exercises are good. They just, you know, just remember, think about what, what if you were an emergency, a natural disaster, and you came acro- upon somebody that was buried under something, what would you need to do to be able to get them out of that? And maybe think about that and then say, okay, what kind of workouts can I do that will give me the muscles, the strength, the flexibility, and then practice your form too, because you don't want to just go up and a lot of times people can hurt themselves really bad because they, they, 
they just walk up and they think, well, I can just muscle through this, you know, no, yeah. man, you, you could break your back or break, you know, not necessarily break your back, but you could hurt yourself really bad if you haven't gotten yourself, you know, trained on how to lift things with your legs versus with your back, mm -hmm. et cetera. And, um, there's just different things like that, that I think are really important. And, you know, of course, I don't know. I just watched something. I know you guys, we haven't referenced J uh, Jordan Peterson in a while, uh, but I want to reference Michaela Peterson, uh, who is his daughter. If you go to her uh, Instagram, and there's, a, um, there's a, a post of her talking about something in Washington, D.C. There's some report they're doing, and they're talking about the processed foods and the food supply, a little bit about how the processed food companies one of the things he talks about is that a lot of the people that were the scientists in the cigarette industry who developed the nicotine and the, um, developed the addictive nature of those things have now moved into and become the scientists for a lot of these food mm. companies. And so now they're building in these foods some of these similar addictive properties and the sugars, of course, we all know that sugar is a huge problem for joints, um, fats, sugars, uh, processed foods. If there's got, if there's got, if there are ingredients on the box that you can't pronounce, you probably shouldn't put it in your mouth. If you, if you can't say it out of your mouth, you shouldn't put it in your mouth. And so Michaela Peterson right now on her Instagram has a great thing. There's several special, uh, you know, as preppers, as conservatives as people are concerned about our country and food supply i think it's also important for us to realize that we should be eating more natural foods and not be eating so many processed foods and that's a great article on that on her instagram about what uh, what they're trying to promote and be, mm -hmm. make aware of the, the policymakers like at this point we need to say look it's gotten out of hand these food processing these these food manufacturers are manufacturing food that is really not healthy well, and I love how many countries are banning our foods, right? Right. Or, well, they or those, same, you, they ban them. The, those same companies have to make a different version for those countries, right? And it just goes back to, you know, we when you store food, eat what you store, store what you eat. We should also be thinking, eat what you grow, grow what you eat, right? Real food is the best food, Um the only actual food in the grocery store, and I'm totally guilty of this, but I'm trying to improve. The only actual food in the grocery store is really the the meat section, and the produce, or the produce and the meat. Everything else past that is like so complex and just innovative. some of the dairy. So yes, yeah, some, some of the dairy. I'm a big yeah, dairy fan. And you know, yeah, um, crazy. I I I think about my weight probably, you know, on a regular basis. Um, Ever since you know a past decade or more, it's been harder for me to not gain weight. Right, it's a much more conscious uh, effort than it was when I was younger. And but one thing I've realized uh, in my struggle, and I use air quotes because I, I don't really tr struggle that hard with it, is that I carry my seventy-two hour kit around my waist, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is I could easily fast for seventy-two hours with water and be perfectly fine. I mean, it wouldn't be any fun, um, but it, you know, I could be done. So there's definitely something to be said about not being extremely lean to where mm -hmm. you don't have much of a fat reserve. I, I don't think that's natural, unless that is your natural body type. That's very much the way I was when I was younger, as well as you know, some of my brothers. And, but obviously I've gotten older and maybe that's uh, a response that the body you know, does to protect itself. It, and, and it, it is a survival response by, by uh, the body packing on, on fat. It, it, it's a, it's a survival store. So uh, that you're so, saying, you're saying that the spare tire is actually a spare food storage. It's, it's well, the, the, dad, it's like the dad body is acceptable tire. is what I'm saying. <laughs> if it's more like a bicycle tire. Yeah. If it's like yes, a, yes. an off-road, be, be a, a tractor like tire, mine, then it's, motorcycle yeah, then it's, tire. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I got a yeah, Bigfoot yeah. tire on my waist right now and I got to fix that. But I, I mean, that goes back to Shane, you started talking about mental toughness and I think that's the exact place to go next because mental toughness is what you need to not just work out, but to also eat right mm -hmm. because our body's like, Oh, I'm craving sugar. Oh, I'm craving caffeine. Oh, I'm craving. Yep, yep. 
right? And you've got to overpower that. And I think if we can work on that better now, it's easier in a disaster to keep our ourselves cool, calm, and collected if we're practicing mental toughness now. I mean, there's so many things psychologically that as a country, as, as a world, we've gotten very weak. We quit easy, right? I'm not going to say us, we, we as a society. There's more quitters than there's ever been. Oh, this is too hard. I'm done. Oh, this is too hard. All right, well, I give up. I quit. I don't have to do that, right? There's more quitting. And I remember as a kid hearing that I'm not raising quitters all the time. Uh -huh. I remember the generation above ours. We don't raise quitters. Yep. You decide to do something, you're going to stick it out and finish it, right? That's and awesome. now it's like, oh, I started working out on January 1st, but I ended working out on January 2nd. Right? There's a yeah. huge mental game there. And, and how do we keep our head, how do we keep We're our mind right? And how do we keep focused with all the distractions and everything else? I mean, that's, I think that's one of my major concerns in my life right now, too. Yeah, well, we live in an on-demand world, right? So it's so easy to get what we want to satisfy our cravings and our urges. Uh, and I, I, I think, and it seems to me that uh, there's a lot of focus around avoiding pain and discomfort and living a luxurious life and being comfortable. And all of that uh, works against uh, your mental toughness. Right. Yeah. And, and that seems to be what the goal is for the future. Oh, it's the future is make a better life, more comfortable life, easier. So you don't have to work so hard, work smarter, not harder. It's all BS. You know that none of that makes sense to me. I hear this all the time. Work smarter, not harder. <laughs> OK, that, that makes sense. Mean? That makes sense. And, and I get it. But why not work smarter and harder? Right. Pain on both sides, physically and mental anguish. Right. Instead of this just BS, it just works smarter. And not hard. It, it, that that has never sat well with me, and I still hear it to this day. Why don't these these experts out there start talking about working smarter and harder? Because I mean, there's so many uh, physical fitness experts out there. You see it. I mean, you start doing a search on on Instagram or any of these platforms, they just keep popping up, and they're great. They're really motivational. There's a lot of great stuff there that you can take away. I I learn a lot and get motivated by those as well. Um, but uh, I don't know if they go far enough. I mean, other I think, than a few, there's a few that do. I think another problem too is the false expectation that, you know, you just, a lot of these companies will put the best looking guy or the best looking gal yeah, on their yeah. equipment mm -hmm. and they'll say, yeah, this look, look what this particular workout equipment did or didn't do. And then you're, you go try that and you're like, it didn't work for me. And so you quit or, and, and you realize that that dude probably didn't even use that thing to get right, right. where he got, or the girl, the gal didn't use that thing. She did, they do whole different exercises. Mm -hmm. And I, I think mm -hmm. one of the things that's really important, especially as you're starting a new habit and is to, to really kind of give yourself some grace. Number one, number two, get realistic about starting something brand new for the first time that you've struggled with in the past by just starting slow and starting small. Like, like I know a ton of guys that will go to the gym and they're like, oh man, I can bench press 200 and they get on the thing and they bench press 200 high. and then they're, then they're sore, so sore. They won't, don't want to go back. And then they like, for, they're like, forget it. Cause the memory, our body is like, Dude, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. here to, your, our mind is here to save you from pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. And so if you remember that going to the gym caused pain and suffering, what's, what do you think is going to happen? is that your mind is going to say, dude, don't go back to that pain and suffering. So what I try to do is if I can, if I feel like I could bench 200, bench 50, like, oh, well, you'll look like a wimp if you only bench 50. I, I don't care. Like I'll be more, I can get from 50 to 75 to hundred to 150. Like now I'm, I'm up doing 245s on each thing going strong. Now I can do it for reps. Like I, I used to be able to do way more and then I had a shoulder injury and I'm building back up. So it's exciting. And that helps your mental toughness. There's a, I don't know if you guys have seen, but there's a TEDx talk by some Shaolin monk guy. And he says, one of the big reasons why there's so much um, mental health issues is because nobody moves physically. Nobody's active. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. spend so much time in front of the computer or in front of the game, uh, in front of their screen that they just don't really know what the real world is. And they get all these false expectations of what, 
people need to do to get to a certain goal. For example, how many of us have seen that I was 24 years old and I'm already a multimillionaire? Really? Like, exactly. Yeah. Like the one guy in like 300,000 that does it. And everybody's like, no, I got to be like that guy. And when they aren't, they said, I must be a loser. I must be an idiot. I didn't do it. That guy did Amazon shipping for or opened an Amazon store, made millions in in a month. And I, I've been doing it for two years and I've only made a, you know, a couple thousand bucks. I must be a loser. It's just the false expectations that we, that social media and et cetera, and these companies have put out there in on purpose, by the way, to, well, they're selling something. Yeah. And that's, we just got to remember, wait a minute, take a deep breath. It's nothing comes easy or quick. And if it does easy, come easy, go. Let me tell you, I know mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. I know enough of these 24 year old millionaires that when by the time they're 30, they might be broke more yeah. often than not. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just remember that sometimes the, the old, uh, what's the Aesop's, Aesop's fable, the tortoise and the hare, mm -hmm. the slow and steady really does win the race. What's funny, I actually met a trainer um, who was talking about what he does with super obese people when they first start out at the gym. He doesn't let them work out. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what? And he's like, I get more results by having them show up and do nothing mm. than having them work out. The first two weeks of their program, they're supposed to show up five days a week, walk around the gym, drink some water, check out the facilities. They're not allowed to sit for more than 30 seconds at a time, but they're just supposed to spend some time there. Whether it's 15 minutes to 30 minutes, doesn't matter. I'm building a routine in their mind that they're coming to the gym every day at a certain time. And if Brilliant. they get hurt or get sore, right, in the first two weeks, it kicks them out of the gym right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so he gives them a tour, has them start that way, and then he'll start their training sessions. He'll show them a circuit. He'll show them something simple. And that's what he'll have them do for the next I think four to six weeks. I don't remember how he, how he stacked it after that. But the That's first two weeks, brilliant. he didn't have him move a single weight. He just wanted to be there, and get used it's, to it. Get yeah, that that goes to the the old saying that I've in even in finance, a lot of people are like, "Well, Paris, I can't save any money. Can you save twenty five cents?" Well, that's not that much money. It's not about the money. It's not about the amount. It's about the habit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same thing with the gym. It's the same thing with our mental toughness. Get our. Sometimes we need to get off of the game. We need to get off of the, you know, the inappropriate website we're probably spending too much time on. And we need to read good books. We need to get our minds working towards solving good solutions in the world. And one of the big things that I've, I've I'm reading a book right now and I've shared it with uh, Shane and Scott. I, I just finished it actually. It's called Stronger Than Your Pain. And it was written by a good friend of mine and a guy or a guy I'm getting to be good friends with. And one of the things he talks about in there is just like, if you... If you're hanging out with somebody and they tell you they're going to do something and then they don't do it, how long are you going to hang out with that guy? Or how long are you going to make plans with that person? If every time they say, oh, I'll be there and they're never there, like soon you're just going to lose all confidence and you're just going to not, you're not yeah. going to want to hang out with that guy. Well, imagine you telling yourself, hey, I'm going to work out today and then you don't. No wonder you have self-confidence issues. No wonder yeah. you have self-esteem issues because you keep telling yourself you're going to do something and then you, you know, and I'm, t I'm looking at the mirror right now, guys, just, I want you to know, I'm looking in the mirror. I tell myself I'm going to do stuff all the time. And then I said, yeah, I'm too tired now. Nah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll mm -hmm. do it in an hour. I'll do it later. I'll get to, I'll get around to it, you know, and then I never do, or, or I just, I spend like, I just crunch time, you know, it's like, Oh crap, it's due tomorrow. And then you just do all of it at once. Like that's yeah. just not, that's Doesn't not a way you. to build self-esteem and self-confidence and start small. Hey, I, I'm just going to go to the gym. I'm going to walk around. I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to spend 15 minutes there and I'm going to leave easy. You can do it. Once you do that enough times, you have self-confidence. Now you're building your self-esteem. You start to believe, Hey, I can do this. And then mm -hmm. you move into build, you know, more advanced stuff. Like I just love that idea, Scott. Thanks for sharing that. Oh, it was, yeah, definitely wasn't my idea, but definitely brilliant. Um, and it goes like every, everything we've talked about, going back to getting better at being prepped, how we can take all this and apply it to our lives, wherever we are in whatever situation we are. Right. Start small. Stay consistent, and. 
do it as much as you possibly can without digital devices. Right? Agreed. If you can yeah. print out your workout routine and go do it away from your TV, away from radio. Like, I don't know. Some people have to have music when they work out. But do it away so that you can also be work on mindfulness and really think things through. Man, I tell you, before I started working out with earbuds, I thought so much more and I found creative solutions to a lot of the problems that I was facing because that was my kind of mental mantra time to really focus and learn. So yeah. as you start, whatever you're starting on, make it a habit to work, not just your body, make, work your mind. Clean up and, and improve that, the fridge, <laughs> the menu, what's going on with your food, right? Work on all those things. And start and with then, one meal. Start with one meal. Yeah. Just swap out one meal. Instead of eating Fruit Loops, maybe eat, you know, honey bunches of oats. Instead of eating Fruit Loops, eat some oatmeal. Like just one thing, and it doesn't have to be major. Just one step closer yeah. to being healthy. That's yeah. it. You know, I think is part of my, I guess, closing thought is, um, you know, getting back to more of the prepping aspect. Look to the past to prepare for the future. So look to the future. What kind of future do you see? What kind of future do you see for yourself? What kind of future, where do I want to find myself in the future? And you know, part of that is being on a homestead and being in my fifties and getting older, it's not getting any easy for me. So I'm taking this very seriously now for that reason is that I still have a lot to do. I still have a home to build. I've still got trees to plant. I've got a lot to do. And so focusing on my fitness and not getting injured and knowing I have a family that really counts on me. I've got four daughters, you know, that yes, they should do more. <laughs> I won't go there, but, uh, but, but also um, just having that vision of the future or where, where I feel I need to be. And so what do I need to do now to, to be there and to stay there as long as I can into my sixties and hopefully my seventies. So I can have some kind of quality of life uh, on my homestead is where, where I ultimately want to find myself. So that's part of my motivation. That's awesome. Paris, any final thoughts before we close it out? I would just say um, that if you feel like there's a, there's a, I, the, the important thing to remember is that you'll, you, like I feel depressed some days. I feel like I don't want to get up and I don't want to do it. But action really does change your mental state. And if I'm not feeling good mentally, if I'm feeling depressed or down or out, I just say to myself, you know what? I always feel better after my workout. And I may not be pumping the iron like I do when I'm totally you know, pumped for it. Maybe I'll just do a little bit or a half the workout I normally do. And then action, the, the momentum that you gain as you move forward is what helps me get through stuff. You know, if you stand still, you're going to get attacked. But if you're moving forward, I feel like God can work with that momentum and move you in the direction you need to go as long as you're moving and making a movement, whether that's act, taking action in exercise physically or taking action to read good books or get do some, some type of preparedness. It's just really good. And then the last thing I want to say is that for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you'll see that we got these new cool shirts I'm wearing, and we're going to be starting to make these new designs available as we uh, come as we move forward here for you guys to be able to get some of them yourself. So, I just wanted to highlight that I'm wearing one of our cool new shirts because I know Scott's <laughs> wearing it and Shane's wearing one too. Different, different, uh, a different um, design. So I'm not super as flashy cool. as these guys. So you you get a preview by watching the show on YouTube. Thank you guys. So. Those of you who are listening, you've, you've gotten some good advice. You've gotten some good direction. Start small. Keep at it every day. Take some time. Devote some time. This is this is a journey. It's not a sprint. We are the tortoise. And this has been awesome for me. I appreciate you guys so very much, uh, both of you as well as all of you listening. Um, let's do this together. Let's get better at everything, right? And the way to do that, one little step at a time. Thank you for listening to Prepper Talk Radio. This is radio for the ready-minded. That's why we talk about mental strength, mental fortitude, mental toughness so often. But we also need to make sure we take care of our bodies, take care of our families, take care of ourselves so we know what to do and what our limitations are when faced with a disaster. We can minimize those limitations now. 
It's all about preparing for the future. Thank you for tuning in and not tuning out. Make sure you go check out amp-3.net and use the code PrepperTalk to save 15% on checkout. And if you've forgotten about the most delicious meats in survival world, they're over at Survival Frog. Like I, I they're not, it's not freeze dried. It's fully cooked, preserved for 25 years in cans, delicious. Mm-hmm. Only added a bit of salt. Fantastic. Oh, go check about it out. The code. Use the code Prepper Talk 10 at survivalfrog.com and save 10% on your whole order. It's fantastic. I love it. You'll love it too. Thanks for joining this week. We'll catch you on the next episode. See you next week. Take care, guys.